been on my mind more than just this morning. I've been kind of reading this and studying this throughout the course of the week. It's a verse of scripture that, to be honest with you, when the thought first came to me, have you ever have you ever felt like maybe the Lord is leading you to do something and then you wonder, Lord, is it really you or is this just me? That happens to me a lot. I don't know about you, but I've learned to search these things out because I don't want to ever be guilty of preaching my message and teaching my lesson. I want to preach the Lord's message and I want to teach the Lord's message. So when this verse of scripture came to my mind this week, I thought to myself, Dad, you, you've, you've taught this thing inside out and upside down. Uh, and I remember going to the Lord and saying, Lord, is, is, this, is this you or is this me? And I remember shortly after I prayed that prayer, I was sitting in my chair and I was reading the Bible and going through some devotional things and and I came across uh, something in a devotion that really, well, I came across it in a commentary. It really blessed me. And it said, Peter often failed at many things, but he never failed to follow. And I thought, okay, Lord, I'll follow you. And we'll read this verse of scripture, even though we've read it a hundred times. We'll go into teaching it, even though I've probably taught it a hundred times. And uh, boy, I've just been blessed. I've just been blessed by the Holy Spirit um, this morning. I want to I want to point out to you though before we begin reading the Word of God. And as I was studying the Scriptures this week, I found it very interesting that Jesus' first words to Peter, and you can find this in Mark one seventeen. Jesus is first words to Peter were, come ye after me. That's the very first words that Jesus spoke to Peter. When Peter met Jesus and they had the conversation, the very first words that Jesus spoke to Peter, according to Mark 1.17, was, come ye after me. The last words that Jesus spoke to Peter, you can find in the book of John chapter 21 and verse 22, was, follow thou me. Do you see, throughout the course of Peter's life, there was one main message that Jesus Christ delivered unto him. And that was the following. Now, if you've read anything at all about the life of Peter, you know that there were time after time after time again that Peter messed up. Peter got it wrong. Peter failed in many different areas of his life. There were times that Christ had to rebuke him. Do you remember in the scripture when Jesus was telling the disciples about the coming crucifixion and how that he would die? Peter said, far be it from, far be this from me, Lord. Jesus had to rebuke Peter and actually call him Satan. He said, Satan, get thee behind me, thou art an offense to me. Uh, there were times when Peter was so outspoken that he would just speak without thinking. And I don't think that that message applies to anybody here in this church this morning, does it? Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes we speak before we think. And I think that if we would think before we speak, we wouldn't get in some of the trouble that we would get into. But Peter, I, that might be one of the reasons why I can so identify with the character of Peter because Peter suffered so many things in his life that we suffer as well. And there were just many, many, many times that Peter got it wrong. And many times that Peter failed, but there's one area in Peter's life that he didn't fail, and that was he never failed to follow. Now you might say, Pastor Dad, how can you say that Peter never failed to follow? Because we can take you to a scene shortly before Jesus was crucified and show you in the scripture that Peter wasn't all the way to the cross with Christ because of that conversation that he had in the courtyard just outside of Jerusalem. When they came to take Pete, when they came to take Jesus to try him, to flog him, to whip him, to crucify him. 
we see according to the scripture that Peter was standing next to the enemy's fire and warming himself along with the enemy. And, that, and, and that's the scene where, where when the cock began to crow that Peter had denied him three times. You need to pay close attention to the reading of that scripture because the Bible says Peter followed him from afar off. Now there was one that ran all the way into the courtyard with him. This is just a little bit of Pastor Thad. I can't prove to you what I'm about to say. I can only share with you that it's the way that I see it. So whether you agree with it or whether you don't, that's okay because I have no Bible for this. But there was one that followed him. We know this according to the scripture. There was one that followed him into the courtyard and he had himself wrapped up in a linen. And when they saw him, they, they, they ridiculed him and they humiliated him by taking his garment off of him and he had to run out of the city and he had nothing on underneath that robe. I think... And here's the part, Pastor that I think that that was probably Mark. And the reason I feel that way is, one, if you read the scriptures, that kind of sounds like something Mark would have done. And two, he's the one that wrote about it. So I can't prove that, so that's just a little bit of me. What I'm trying to get at is that Peter didn't follow very closely to Christ on that night. But Peter certainly followed from afar off. And yes, Peter messed up. And yes, Peter denied the Lord. And yes, Peter did all these things. But it's imperative that I point this out to you right up front. That even though Peter followed from afar off, he still never failed to follow. And because he never failed to follow, he was able to see and to, and to come to understand the truths of Christ's words. When Christ told him, you're going to deny me, Peter said, and I ain't going to deny you. But when the crow caught, when the cock crowed, Peter had already denied him three times, just like Jesus had said. And something moved upon Peter, which caused him great grief. And the Bible says he repented. And we see a picture later on in the scripture how that Peter was used by the Holy Spirit to bring a message that was so powerful that 3,000 souls got saved. And added them to the church. So I want you to understand something today. Sometimes, sometimes the sting of failure is enough to stop a person dead in their tracks. How many of you have ever felt the sting of failure? How many of you have ever had to go to God in prayer and say, Lord, it's me again? Do you ever wonder if God just sat up there saying, wow, when are they ever going to get it? Listen, we live in a world today, and our society is so focused in on success and prosperity that there's absolutely no room at all for failure. Amen. And I want to declare a gospel truth to you this morning.
Satan say, well, surely you can't be a child of God. Look at how badly you have failed. It's an attack from hell, friend. It's an attack from Satan. And the Bible says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. I want to shine a light in a dark place this morning and illuminate the truth in your life and hopefully you will be able to come to understand that even though I failed, I will not fail to follow Christ. Because when we follow Christ, greater images of His glory will be manifested into us. Greater understanding of His power shall be made known. Greater understanding of his words of truth and wisdom shall become ours. And then we'll grow and we'll see greater and bigger blessings of God. The Bible says, read with me, Matthew chapter 17. After six days, Jesus taketh Peter and James and John his brother and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. Do you see here on purpose? On purpose, Jesus was with all of his disciples, but he on purpose took these three men up into this high mountain with them. That's very important. Very important because you see, your walk with the Lord and my walk with the Lord are two different walks. Your call and my call are two different calls. Your job and my job are two different jobs. We are all called by the same Spirit. We are all called to walk in the same gospel, but your life is different than mine and mine is different than yours. And you're going to be called upon God to do your thing. I'm going to be called upon God to do my thing. And here's the thing. Your thing and my thing may not be the same thing all the time. We are all going to have our own experiences in life when we are called to be in a certain place at a certain time on purpose by Christ. Amen. And it's going to help you to be able to understand a few things in order for you to be able to face that time when it comes. So he brings them up to the high mountain apart and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared in the, them Moses and Elias talking with them. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Say that with me. It is good for us to be here. How many of you know that it's good for you to be here this morning? It's not just good to be here, but it's good for you to be here. Amen. You get that? Mm -hmm. That something can be good and something can be good for you. Rocky Road chocolate ice cream is good. Spinach is good for you. <laughs> you see the difference? There's some people that say, man, it's just so good to be here this morning. I get to see my friends. What would you do if your friends didn't show up? Would it still be good? Yes. There's some people that say, well, this is just so good. But it not only is it good to be here, it's good for you to be here. Amen. And now I want you to hang on to that because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna spend some time on that here in just a minute. And behold, there appeared unto the Moses and Elias, Peter said unto the Lord, it's good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. Usually this is where I get hung up and I stop and I preach the message on doing what you know to do. Let's keep reading. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. When the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. I know it's only been just a few weeks 
weeks ago that I read these very verses of Scripture. But throughout the course of this week, Christ has led me back into these verses of Scripture. And there's a couple of things that I want to point out for you. First of all, first of all, the Scripture teaches us that Peter said it is good for us to be here. The reason that it is good for us to be here, I'm, I'm going I'm to take two different avenues with you this morning. The reason that it is good for us to be here is because here is the place where the glory of Christ is revealed to us from the preaching of His Word, from the leadership of the Holy Spirit of God, and from heart to heart and pew to pew. I'm going to tell you, there are people here who have a set of problems or a set of issues. There's another group of people that has another set of problems or a set of issues. There might be a lost one in our midst. We don't know what people are going through. We don't know what people are faced with. So I need to tell you that it is good for you to be here because when Peter was there on top of that Mount of Transfiguration, he knew who Jesus was. You can't deny that. You can't argue that. Peter was a disciple of Christ. A disciple was a follower. Peter had followed Jesus and heard him preach. Peter had followed Jesus and heard him teach. Peter had followed Jesus and witnessed him do great miracles. Peter knew who Jesus was. Peter could have picked Jesus out in a crowd, in a multitude of people. Peter knew who Jesus was. And I believe that there's many people in our world, in our church world, maybe even here this morning, there's no doubt you know who Jesus is. <clears throat> there's no doubt that you followed him. Even when it was hard to follow. There's no doubt in my mind that you have Christ in your heart, that you've received the gospel, been set free, you're born again, and you're one of his own. You know Jesus. But you need to see his glory in your life. Oh, I want to just take off on that, but I, it is good for us to be where the glory of Christ is being manifested and being made known. Yeah. It's good for you to be here. Yeah. And man, I, not too long ago, I counseled with a lady. And she was telling me, I don't want to get deep into it, that's between me and her and the Lord, but she was telling me of some very hard things that she was being faced with in life. And she was telling me that I've been a believer for 20 years. And I've walked with God, and I've prayed, and I've read my Bible, and I'm faithful to Him. When He calls me to do something, I do it without question. I know I'm a child of God. And then she had a little pity party. She said, so why all of this is happening to me, I don't know. And she went on listening. I am my eye this and this and this and this and this. And I just started to talk. I listened. You know, sometimes it's better if we let people think that God has something to say all the time. You don't always have to have something to say. Sometimes it's best just to have an open ear for someone to talk to. I let her go on and on and on and she emptied her heart and she cried and we went through a half a box of Kleenexes and she cleared her throat to take a break and come back and talk more. I just let her talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and get it off of her heart. Finally, at last she said, well, are you going to say anything? I said, if you want me to, I will. She said, well, I would love that. I said, okay, I need to tell you like I tell everybody else that I counsel. I love you. There's not anything you're going to say to me that's going to change my opinion of you. And if you don't want to know, don't ask. Because I'm going to tell you the truth the way that I see it. She said, I need it. I need it. I need that right in my face, hardcore truth. Don't get me club anything. I said, okay, says here it is. It's good that you are where you're at right now. And if she could have got to me, I think I'd either got slapped or choked or scratched or something. Because she said, how can you possibly say that what I just shared with you was good? I said, because the Bible said, and then I shared with her this thing with Peter. 
that you see in the Scripture that Christ, look at verse 2, He brought him up into this high mountain and was transfigured before them. I'm going to follow the Holy Spirit now and begin to preach. Do you understand what transfigured means? Do you get the thought? If, if you had to explain to somebody, if somebody read that scripture and said, yeah, I read that and it's kind of cool, but I don't understand what transfigured means. Would you be able to answer them? Would you be able to teach them? Would you be able to help them along the way? Transfigured means The only word I can think of, and, and this word does absolutely no justice to transfigure, but the only word I can think of to try to teach this is that He changed. Something about Christ changed right before Him, but change really is, I wish I could think of a better word than change. Right now it's the only one I can think of. Change can be very subtle. Change can be very big. We all have to deal with changes in our life. You know, you can, you can go home today after church and sit down in your front room and begin watching a program on TV. And if you didn't like what you were watching, you could just grab the remote and change the channel. Now it's no longer there because you've created a change and your provision is still the same. The remote is still the same. That didn't change. Only thing that changed was your program. Or <sighs> Laura's been shopping for paint. It means I'm going to be painting the front room, and dining room, and kitchen. Uh, I'll want to preach a message about that one of these days too. But. <laughs> uh, so here in just a very short amount of time, we are going to change the appearance of the interior of the house. But see, the house is still the house. It still stands. It's still the same. The bedrooms are still where they're at. The kids are still going to be where they're at. Everything about the house is the same. The house didn't change. Only thing that changed was the appearance of the interior of the house. So to use the word change for transfigure, I wish there was a better word because when something is transfigured, it's not just changed. It is totally different. Christ was transfigured before these disciples and because of that transfiguration, His glory was made known to these men and they were able to understand greater depths of who Christ really is because of a time of transfiguration in their life. And hear me today, my friend. Because it's pain. 
coming to an end. I can tell you of times in my life when just like this woman, I said to myself, Lord, I followed you. Lord, I read your word. Lord, I sought you in prayer. I've preached. I've taught. I've sacrificed. Why is this happening to me? Because something in my life needed to witness a transfiguration. Now, anytime Satan is coming along and trying to convince me that I'm a failure, I can tell him that the blood of Jesus Christ does not fail. That me in my flesh, I might get it wrong from time to time. But Satan, if you want to get to me, you're going to have to tread through the blood of Jesus Christ, which has never failed. It stood the test of time. Peter never failed to follow. When Christ called them to that mountain, Peter came. When Christ said, you folks stay here, I want you, you and you to come with me, Peter was one of those three. And Peter didn't question, Peter didn't argue, Peter didn't say, why are we going up there? Only thing Peter did was follow. There's wisdom in following where Christ would lead you. We kick and scream, we get mad. We wonder. We doubt. We fear. Why am I here? I don't know why you're here. But God's got a purpose for you being yeah. here. Just trust it. <laughs> and you're going to get a greater blessing and greater wisdom and a greater understanding if you just <laughs> if we can just settle in on the fact that we are followers of Christ. Amen. How many of you believe that Christ will not lead you into something that's going to hurt you or destroy you? Amen. I mean, can you say amen to that? Amen. Amen. So why would we, why, why would we possibly worry that we're about to get into something that's going to destroy us? If we're being led by the Holy Spirit, He's not going to allow you to be destroyed. <coughs> amen? That's fear. That's fear. Fear of failure. Fear of not understanding. Fear of rejection. Fear of whatever. That's fear. And we are not called into a spirit of fear. Praise His holy name. That's the first thing I want to point out to you. Was this transfiguration. Christ didn't just change in front of them. He was transfigured in front of them. His glory was being known. Do you see that in the scripture? His 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 face shined like it was the sun. His raiment was white as the light. And he stood before them in his glory. Now, up to this point, they hadn't seen the glory of Christ. They'd seen the power. They'd seen the knowledge. They'd seen his heart. They'd seen, they'd seen everything that he was about. But they had not witnessed the glory of Christ here in this change. Here in this transfiguration, we are able to see the glory of Christ as being the Son of God, as being the King of Kings, as being the Lord of Lords. We see the glory of Christ. His face is shining like the star. His raiment is as what? In their midst of transfiguration, they were able to see His glory. So that tells me rather than trying to run my times of transfiguration off because it makes me uncomfortable, maybe I need to step out of my comfort zone a little bit and trust more in God and receive from this transfiguration in my life what I need to receive so that I can understand more glory of the power of Jesus Christ. I wondered today as I began to preach this message, I knew it would be a challenge. And I remember even telling the Lord in prayer, Lord, I, I don't know how many amens we're going to get. That's why I'm glad I've been preaching long enough now. I don't need an amen. I can just keep right on going with it. Nobody likes change. Okay, I get that. You don't like it. You don't like it. You don't like it. You don't like it. Nobody likes change. 
But friend, do you remember reading when the children of Israel had encamped in that mountain? And they just kept continuing to march and march and march and walk and wandering around that mountain day in, day out, day in, day out. God didn't call them to take up residence in that mountain. God called them to go and possess the land that He had promised them. And the day came when God told the children of Israel, You have, you have wandered around this mountain long enough. Now go and possess the land which I promised to give you. Sometimes we get so comfortable that we just keep walking around, walking around, walking around, walking around in that same old mountain. And listen, if something doesn't change in our lives to get us out of that place and into the next place that Christ would have us to be, we're never going to, we're, we're never going to enjoy the fullness of knowing who Christ is. Nobody likes change, but change is inevitable. And so what we need to learn to do is quit being afraid about the change. Learn all we can learn while the change is taking place so that we can receive more glory from Christ. Behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then Peter answered and said unto the Lord, It is good for us to be here. We've already preached out. Well, I need to just keep on going, but it is good. It is, you know, the scripture, there's another psalm, I believe it's in the book of Psalms, that says, it was good for me that I was afflicted. How can something like an affliction possibly be good for anybody? We show up on Sunday morning, we say, brother, so and so sick, we need to pray for him. We pray, Lord, will you touch him, will you heal him, will you deliver him from this affliction? We show up at church on Sunday morning and say, so-and-so sick. Well, we pray for so-and-so. How can something like an affliction possibly be a good thing when the book of Psalms says it was good for me that I was afflicted? We don't want affliction in our life. I don't want affliction in our life. I'm going to put money in there. If the rest of you don't, I'll put mine. I do not want to be afflicted. I pray for deliverance. I pray for help. I pray for healing. I pray for leadership. I pray for guidance. I don't want affliction in we don't like affliction. I don't like it. Doesn't make you a bad person. It makes you normal. Nobody wants affliction. We don't like it. So how can something like an affliction possibly be good for us? How can transfiguration, how can change? Well, it's simple. It's because it's during those times in our lives when we have absolutely no other recourse than to seek the blessing of God. Oh, well, I 
was young, and I thought, oh boy. And I went to the Bible and I read about gates of pearl, walls of jasper, and streets of gold, and a crystal clear river of life. Oh, we could take that verse of scripture and preach to you about how beautiful heaven must be. <coughs> But that's not what that verse is. I realized something. Yeah. That's not what that verse of Scripture is saying at all. When Paul said, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed, yeah. not to us, <coughs> but in us. Mm -hmm. Ha, well, that changes the game a little bit, don't it? See, the glories of heaven are what they be revealed to us. But the glory of God is going to be revealed in us. And listen, you don't have to die and go to heaven for that to happen. you got to wake up on Monday morning and pour your cup of coffee and go to work and just be who God called you to be. you got to get up in your house, around your husband, around your wife, around your children, around your grandchildren, and be who God called you to be in the midst of this ever-changing life and this ever-changing world. There is one constant, and that's Jesus Christ. And he said, the Bible says, Jesus Christ is saying, yesterday, today, and forevermore. Christ does never change. There is transfiguring happening all around us. Our children get off balance. Our homes get off balance. Marriages get off balance. Careers get off balance. Everything, everything around us has the potential to be a transfiguring time in your life. And hear me, I love you enough to tell you the truth. That change can either kill you or that change can strengthen you. And it's all in how we handle these transfiguring times in our lives. Keep your eyes, Fred, keep your eyes focused on Christ. And you'll see that glory. You'll see that glory. So they followed him. As he led them to that mountain, he followed them. And as I've already told you, Peter might have failed in a lot of things, but Peter never failed to follow. The second thing I want to point out to you is uh, I don't know where he's done that too. Is he realized it was good for him to be where he was at. And it is good for you to be here. The, the third thing I want to point out to you, the third thing I want to point out to you is the wisdom that they received because of this time of transfiguring. There was a time in my life when I would go through something hard or tragic, uncomfortable. And you know, the first thing I would do, the first thing that I would do is I would pick up the phone and I would call my friend. And I would say, oh, you ain't gonna believe what happened to me today. And I'd listen to everything that that friend had to say. And I'd hang up the phone and I'd call another friend. And I'd tell that friend everything I went through. And this is what my other friend had to say. And that friend would say, oh my God, well, he's got that all wrong. Here's what you need. Before you knew it, I'd done called ten different friends. And all ten of them had ten different answers as to what it was that I needed to do. And I was still just as confused as a goose and didn't know, didn't know, didn't know that what to do. And so I was kind of living my life like flipping a coin, you know. Okay, I'm either going to do this or I'm going to do that. I don't know how to flip a coin, heads or tails. And I take off the good. Sometimes I got it right, but most of the time I got it wrong. But I got to tell you, I never had peace. I was always I was never at peace. I knew Christ. I had repented of my sins. I had received Him to be my Lord and Savior. But I had not yet. I had not yet traced up the Mount of Transfiguration and laid it down and said, Lord, I'm going to receive Your glory. When we can learn to follow Christ, and to hear him, then we're going to find some deliverances in our lives. You know, sometimes hearing Christ has to that kind of hard. What do you mean? Well, because Christ would have me to do something I don't really want. Well, you know what? When God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was void without form, and there was darkness upon the face of the deep, and the Holy Spirit moved, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Do you? Did you realize, have you ever spent any time reading the, the, the Genesis account of creation? How that all things were created by Him and without Him there was nothing made that was made. 
And he created trees, and he created grass, and he created fruit, and he created birds, and he created animals, and he created fish. He created it all. And out of all the things that he created, there was one thing that he created that he gave the power of choice to. And that man, that's me, that's you. He gave but when he created us, he created us with the power to choose. Okay? You possess the power to receive this glory of Jesus Christ by how you choose to walk through it. By how you choose to receive it. You can choose Yeah. You can choose to be an overcomer or you can choose to be overcome. I don't like that, Pastor Pat. I know you don't because it's kind of challenging for me to even teach it to you. But it doesn't matter what we like. It only matters what is true because it's the truth that will set us free and I believe that we need to be set free from some things in our lives today. You possess the power to receive that glory in your life. Will you choose? Will you choose to see Christ in the midst of this transfiguring time in your life and receive His glory and His power and His might and His strength? Or will you choose to walk back down that mountain with the others who did not go up to see it in the first place? You know, here's the thing. You can sit back and, 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 and have your relationship with Christ. You can sit back and, and know that you're saved and know that when the world ends, you're going to go on off to heaven. But really experience no victories in your life. Or you can choose to say, it's kind of good that I'm here because I'm going to be able to learn something more about Christ and who He is and His power in my life. And receive what Christ said. Did you notice in the Scripture, after they fell on their faces, before they fell on their faces, Heaven opened up and a voice of God came booming saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am all pleased. Hear ye Him. That, me that message is personal. Do you understand what the word Y-E in the King James language means? It means Y-O-U in the English language. God said, You hear what He has to say. You know, our world today is trying to throw the truth out the window because they don't like the truth. Sometimes, sometimes the truth is a little hard. But if we hear it, and if we receive it, it will set us free. Now it's time for me to close this out. I'm sure in our midst, I'm sure in our midst there are those of you that are here that are experiencing some kind of fear because of some kind of change in your life right now. You need to tell yourself it's good that you're here. I'm sure that there are some of you who are scared to death because you know that God is calling you into something and you're afraid that you're going to fail at it. <laughs> you need to tell yourself it's good that I'm here. I'm sure that there's somebody in our midst who may be listening to us by way of the internet that's lost as a goose and headed for a devil's hell. The Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart and saying, come and receive me to be your Lord and your Savior. But something on the inside of you is saying, look, I would love to get saved, but I'm afraid I can't live it. Well, here's some truth for you. You can't. You can't. Well, you don't have a chance of living it outside of Jesus Christ. But inside of Jesus Christ, the Scripture promises I can do all things through Him and You can be saved today. You can be delivered today.
Your fear could be replaced with faith today. Your confusion could be replaced with peace. I don't know what it is that you came to church with this morning or what it is that you listening to us by the way of the internet. But there is glory and you can choose to receive it. You just need to come to the understanding this may look bad. I may be uncomfortable, but it's good that I'm here because God is working a change and I'm going to see greater glory to Christ. Will you receive that message today? Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Give us a song. I never, I, I remember when I felt the call of the Lord to preach His Word, I made a promise to God. And I'll never close out a service without giving some lost soul the opportunity to come and receive Jesus Christ. And I know there are those that would say, Pastor Tad, you you're preaching to the choir this morning. Look out in your congregation. It's the same people that's here every week. They're faithful Christian people. They, they love the Lord. They love the church. And I have no problems believing that. But listen, the scripture teaches me that we see the outside of Christ sees the inside. And I just wonder, as we have this quiet time, is there one or more of you here today? Maybe you've got religion. Maybe, maybe you've grown up right. <coughs> and you've not committed the sins that other people have committed. You might even fancy going to church and singing the old hymns. <coughs> Probably can quote a few Bible books. <coughs> and you've got the world full. And you've got the church world full. But you know, you know, you know if you have ever reached that point in your life where you allowed that transfiguring power to happen for you and you to become a new creature. You know full well if you've ever said, Lord, I'm lost and I need to be saved. Will you forgive me for your saving? Is that you, friend? Is there one more of you here today? Listen, every head bowed, every eyes closed. You know me. I'm not going to grab you by the hand, way up front of the church and make a spectacle out of you. I just want to leave you in prayer. And there's no one can see you right now just me and God. Are you lost? Do you need the Lord's forgiveness in your life? Have you committed sin and you have not repented of? You've got today. Make it right. Let God's transfiguring power into your life. And let Him make that change. Receive the glory of Jesus Christ. Is there one more of you? Praise God. Praise the Lord. Okay then. And now for you, those of you on the internet that are watching, <coughs> listening at this point, I want you to join me in prayer along with the one that's here with us today. There's an old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. I can lead you, but you're going to have to do the praying for yourself. Just go to the Lord and tell him, Lord, I come to you. And I confess my need for salvation. I'm lost, Lord. And I don't want to die that way. So forgive me. And save me. And change me. Let me receive your glory. And I'll give you the praise. In Jesus' name. I believe that you are the Son of God. In Jesus' name. I believe you raised from the dead. In Jesus' name, I believe you're coming back for me. And in Jesus' name, I thank you for saving me. Amen. Amen. Now for the rest of you that are here. Father God, I come to you on behalf of everyone else. We know, Lord, that change in our life can sometimes be a horrible thing to experience. Sometimes, when things get transfigured on us to what we can't even recognize what it used to be, our hearts can get broken, our minds can get heavy. We think of days gone by of friendships and relationships, how wonderful and beautiful they were. But then something happened. Everything was transfigured and it's no longer even remotely what it used to look 
look like and what it used to be. Lord, we don't like these times of change. We don't like these times of transfiguration. We get older. Gone are the days of our youth. We get sick. Gone are the days of our health. And it's so easy, Lord, to fall into fear. It's so easy, Lord, to fall into failure. Help us to remember, Lord, that even though Peter failed at many things, he never failed to follow. So, Lord, we don't know where our path will take us. We don't know what changes or transfiguring things will happen. We only know, Lord, that we don't want to fail to follow you. So, Lord, take us by the hand. Lead us where you'd have us to go. Let us know in our hearts that wherever that might be, it's good for us to be there. Lord, that you might receive the honor and the glory and the praise. Let us hear you. Let us follow you. This I ask in Jesus' name.